Erwin, how's it going? So, it's the holiday season. The perfect time for us all to sit back and read some really fun holiday-centric comics. But, for the few that are still looking, well, I got a few suggestions. Starting off this series of holiday-centric reviews, I got a very DC Rebirth holiday special. Now, for the people that have just gotten into comics, I should explain what DC Rebirth is. Well, to make a very, 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 very long story short, DC Rebirth was created by Jeff Johns to undo some of the damages that was caused during the last reboot, New 52, starting with the one-shot story under the same name that was published in the summer of 2016. And it was a hit, along with bringing back classic comic book titles and characters like The Titans and The Flash Wally West, also brought in new books and characters like the Super Sun series and the new Superman, a story that introduced Kong Keenan, the Superman of China. Because of the big hit, you'd think that'd be smooth sailing for DC, right? Well, unfortunately not, because Dan, Dick Grayson must suffer the Dio, it went all to crap, but that's a whole story that I have no time to explain. This book was published in November of 2017. This contains three books from the previous year. DC Holiday Special, Batman Annual Number 1, and Harley Quinn Issue 10. When it comes to the first two books, they're anthology stories, so there are a lot of stories with uh, the DC Holiday Special having the most. I won't cover all the stories, I'm just going to be talking about just the ones that really, you know, really stuck out to me. I will bring up some of the other DC stories, but not to a major degree. Warning. Spoilers. So let's get started with a very DC Rebirth holiday special. Man, try saying that five times fast. We open to everyone's favorite heroic clown, well, sometimes heroic clown, Harley Quinn, who's hosting a fun little party where we see all of our favorite heroes having a drink and being merry along with several villains. If you're wondering why that's all happening, don't think about it too hard, it's not canon. The party is really just a framing device for the shorts. Starting with a Superman Batman story, though I would argue it's also a Super Sun story, The Last Minute where after fighting a golden age monster known as the rainbow creature, no seriously, Superman realizes that he hasn't gotten a gift for his son John, aka Superboy. He knows what John wants and heads off to get it, but turns out he ain't the only one getting a last minute gift. Who is that? Damian Wayne, the son of Batman and the fifth Robin who also is planning to give the gift to his best friend. So, of course, shenanigans ensue. Another story that we get is a Batwoman story called Lights Out, where we see Kate Kane doing an old Hanukkah tradition she used to do with her father until she is stopped by a man claiming to be a mind reader and saying that he knows that she's Batwoman. The same man is later kidnapped, leading to Kate having to spend her third night of Hanukkah trying to figure out who this guy is, why he was being kidnapped, and why her old partner Kit, who she hasn't talked to in two years, is connected. The last story that I'll really get into is with the Titans, a story called What a Year for a New Year, where we have the team dealing with a classic Teen Titans character, Ding Dong Daddy. Yes, that is his name. Answer is simple, he's Golden Age. While Roy Harper, aka Arsenal, is trying to lead the charge on New Year's Eve. For reasons that are very interesting. And really does kind of give you an idea that yes, Roy Harper can be written as a competent character. And not just whatever the hell New 52 is trying to do with the character. Seriously, what was that? The holiday special is pretty fun. And you can definitely tell that the writers really had a ball. I mean, we got stories where Batman and Detective Chimp have to go save Rudolph, we got John Constantine and Wonder Woman teaming up during the Winter Solstice, and the Green Lantern team, Jessica Cruz and Simon Baz facing off against aliens dressed like the Three Wise Men. No, seriously, that happens? As for the Harley Quinn party segment, it's pretty fun and well written, which ain't a big surprise since Paul Dini's the one writing it. To the people that don't know, Paul Dini is actually one of Harley Quinn's co-creators. And yeah, he has not lost a beat. Next, we talk about Batman Annual Number 1. This annual opens with a story of Batman getting a dog for Christmas. That dog being Ace the Bat Hound. So yeah, add more to Batman's line of animal sidekicks, though no one will ever top Bat Cow. Now, this version of Ace was a victim of the Joker who surprisingly doesn't appear in this annual. Huh, 
Alfred has to train the dog on his own, but it's really just because Bruce thinks that, well, it's pointless since the Joker's broken this dog, though Alfred thinks otherwise. The next story, once again, we see Paul Dini riding Harley Quinn, where Batman has arrested her after he finds her on the roof of the GCPD. She claims she's trying to just do some good, but Batman doesn't completely buy it, but he decides to take a long drive, which leads to a very fun little dynamic between the two, with Harley Quinn trying to get Batman to sing along to Christmas carols. And for the final story, we have Batman fighting the Scarecrow. Wait, this, this is a Christmas story, right? Along with his new partner, Haunter. Wrong though, that would be cool. This inmate of Arkham was pretty interesting. The way she interacts with the other inmates is very fascinating, and her plan with Scarecrow is a pretty simple one too. They're going to make Shopper suffer massive anxiety thanks to Fear Toxin. Trust me, you don't need chemicals to do that. The annual wasn't anything too special, but it was pretty cool. There were two other stories that I didn't get into, Silent Night and Stag. Silent Night because it's a pretty chill story and there wasn't really much for me to talk about. It's just pleasant. And Stag, well, it's a prelude to something way bigger coming on the way, but I'll talk about that another time. And now we reach the final book in this trade, Harley Quinn issue 10, which, as I mentioned before, is not an anthology. In this story, we see Harley Quinn and one of her on-again, off-agains, Deadpool, I mean Deadpool, I mean Red Tool, yeah, he's just Deadpool. My guess, either Amanda Connors or Jim Palmiotti really liked the ship and just wanted to have the, a version of the character on there, but whatever, that's not important right now. What is important is that Harley Quinn and Red Tool go to a mall to see Santa only to find out that Santa isn't there, and is no mere mall Santa, but he is the real deal. And he's apparently got some demons. No, seriously, he got some serious demons. So bad that he is in a coma now. The only way to save him is for someone to go inside his mind and help him deal with whatever is causing this, in hopes that it will wake him up. Remember that Harley Quinn episode when they had to go into Harley's mind? Think that except way more Christmassy. It's a pretty fun story and has some good jokes and some pretty creepy moments. Though I will say the cover of issue 10 is a bit misleading since Batman doesn't appear in this. Well, at least the actual Batman. The psychological demon that Harley has to face off in the story does take his form at one point. As we get to the characters, I'm not going to go through each one individually, because one, there are so many of them, two, some pop up in different stories and some writers do have different styles on writing them, and three, and this is the most important one, most of these stories, with a few exceptions like the tie-in story with Roy, which I will admit is one of my favorites, are mostly just played off for fun. They're not meant to be taken so seriously and deep, so it's not a character-driven story. I will say the characters are likable, and I had a lot of fun seeing them interact with each other, especially during this holiday season, and some of the team-ups were pretty interesting. The art varies since, like how we have multiple writers, we have multiple artists. Personally, to me, my favorite artist out of them was Declan Chavley, who has this very sleek style, and yet also has this classic pulp superhero style. It kind of reminded me a little bit of the late Darwin Cook. In fact, I also got some Cook vibes from Elsa Chirriter. I'm so sorry, I probably butchered that name. The artist who did the Harley Quinn party segments. If you love DC Rebirth or just want to see some fun holiday stories with your favorite DC heroes, then this is the book for you. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Next time, we talked a lot about DC. Let's talk about Marvel.